So, yeah, uh, welcome to my talk. Um, if someone comfortable in English, please raise your hand. Okay, cool. Um, I would like to do it in English uh, due to the fact that people are watching the stream and maybe the recordings are being watched. And uh, what I want to speak about is kind of very dear to me. Uh, it's automation and why you should automate and why uh, if you are not doing it, you're doing it wrong. Um, first of all, who, who am I? Um, my name is uh, Madonius. I'm from, I came from Germany. Um, nearly missed my flight. And I am with the hackerspace Entropia in Karlsruhe. And for, first and foremost, I'm a hacker. And in, and in that functionality, I also work at, uh, at one and one Company, uh, it's a hoster and an ISP in Germany. And guess what I'm doing there? I'm, uh, I'm doing mainly automation with Ansible. Um, yeah, so... Um, what is automation in the first place? Um, if you ask Wikipedia, uh, it says automation is the technology by which a process or procedure is performed without human assistance. Um, I think more or less everybody has a grasp of what, uh, what automation means and what it is. Um, but to put it in plain words, it's um, let others do stuff you don't want to do. And uh, most of the time those others are machines. Uh, I mean, you can, of course, you can think of everyday examples where people have automated stuff. For me, um, a thing that I have automated in terms of the feeling for me my, uh, is my tax return. It's something I don't want to do and I pay somebody to do it for me. Um, for me, that's automated away, but yeah, I know that guy probably hasn't done much automation at all. Um, although, I helped him in that, in that sense. Um, so why should you actually automate? What, what's the motivation behind it? Um, first of all, it makes your life easier. I mean, if you see the terms of tax returns or, I don't know, a washing machine is automation too. Um, it helps you getting things done and gets the lift lifts off the mundane tasks uh, of your to-do list. So basically, um, it makes your life easier. That's all. And if I invest time in doing something once right, of course I will have to, to invest that time up front and I will have to, to uh, really consider what I'm doing. We're going to get to that later. Um, you have the benefit of having that concentration of that one moment in time that you invested in that task, all the effort is being transported to every time this, this task is being executed. How often have you, have you not seen people doing routine mistakes because the task is so boring and mundane? You, you have to copy numbers from a from a written, uh, from written piece of paper to, um, to a spreadsheet or something like that. Mistakes happen all the time. I mean, to, to, err, uh, to, to be human is to err. But um, if the task is mundane, our brains are really great in doing a whole lot of other stuff other than the thing that they're supposed to do. So, those mistakes can be avoided by simply making the task, converting that mundane task to a task that happens once and then do it again and again over time. And by that, you also free your mental, your mental resources to be, um, to be invested more into real issues you have every day, like I don't know how to automate the next thing. Um, how somebody, uh, I, don't, I don't remember who that quote has been attributed to. 
and I don't even know if that's right, but I quite like it. Um, hire somebody that automates their uh, their task away. That hire somebody that automates their task, and then give them another task to do, uh, so that they continue automating your procedures. Um, and yeah, what is what would be an example to that? Um, My job, okay? I automate deployment of service. I, um, right now, I'm working on a firewall framework, and if I, what in the past people would do is write their firewall, like in IP tables or whatever, or whatever tool you're thinking about, you would do a firewall in, and, um, that would cost a lot of time. Now I'm investing about roughly two weeks and it will be done. I will have a framework where I can tell the machine, you speak with all those machines and uh, open the firewalls and do whatever you need to do. I don't care. I don't want, I, I want to think about the next issue, the next big problem. Uh, the next thing with automation, if you, okay, if you have only one thing you automate and that you do it periodically, then you reduce the mistakes. But let's say in IT we don't have more than one, we, we don't have only one server, we don't have only one lap. Hell, I don't even have one laptop. I have two, one for work and one private. Uh, I don't, I have like, I don't know, more than 10 devices at home that run Linux on it. Hands up, who has, who has also 10? Like, the rest of you don't know it. Um, all those smart TVs, probably Linux and whatever and whatnot. I mean, probably you saw it in the in the key, in the introduction. Uh, yeah. Also, um, what you get with automation in that case, consistency. You are not thinking about oh, how did I set up that machine again? Did I put that in that folder, or did I put it in that folder, and on what port is SSH listening, and what not. You don't care about that stuff. You, you, should not, you should not care about that stuff. It has to be the things that come to you naturally. And with automation, you can, you can make that. You can have a consistency. You can, if you consider, I don't know, let's say, um, pro uh, I don't know, a product like a drink, okay? If you, if somebody sat there and mixed the drink every day anew, maybe over time it would get better, but it would not be consistent. You won't have the same product. And with automation, you can basically guarantee that. Um, I was, previously I mentioned a little bit the, um, the risks, like, um, what could go wrong and of course <laughs> if you have how, how a professor of mine put it uh, computers are not smart they are really really dumb but extremely fast in being dumb so if you tell a computer to do something wrong and you tell it to do it 100,000 times wrong it will do it it won't ask questions it, it will just do it. And that's the risk. I don't know, have you seen, who has seen Fantasia? It's a really, it's an oldish uh, Disney movie. Uh, one. Okay. Um, this Fantasia is basically a compilation of various uh, uh, animation styles and themes and stories and whatnot. And what the, and one, one of those stories is uh, Mickey being the uh, apprentice of a sorcerer. I think it's based upon a story called Sorcerer's Apprentice, but don't quote me on that. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Um, so, Mickey is, uh, is alone at the sorcerer's shop or whatnot, and he um, is lazy. So what he does, I mean, he has this magic book and what he does, he reads in the book and um, finds out, oh, cool, there is this spell where I can animate a, a broom and tell that broom to do stuff for me. 
So um, he does that. He does that with a broom. He does that with um, with a mop. He does that with different things. And because what he has to do is really tedious and boring and, and really and, and really um, demanding physically. So he automates it. Well, he in, in that movie he what what we in IT would say he forgot the stop control. So the room and the mop would carry water from the well and the, the bucket where the water is stored will uh, would overflow and they would continue and they would continue and continue and continue until the sorcerer comes and makes everything right again. But he messed, he messed up really, he messed up greatly. And that can happen too. So think what you do before you do it. That's the luxury of automation is you only have to think once, but please do it right. And make sure you have checks uh, in place that you don't accidentally take offline a whole service you, uh, you offer. Uh, hands up who did that one. Um, yeah. Um, we have to learn. And that's also the important thing. Test. Really, really, really important. Testing and making sure you actually do what you're doing. Um, in terms of for the management, automation sounds great. I can replace all my workers with, and with processes that are running on some machines and I, have, I can reduce my cost, my, 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 uh, my workforce cost. Well, yes. And no, because you have to invest that effort in the in the beginning, in the very beginning. You have to you have to tell the, to allow the people to do the testing, do the thinking, do the considerations that need to be done uh, in order for the automation to work. That means um, in the beginning you have more investment, and you have a longer uh, uh, release cycle, so to say, but once everything is in place, you can actually work really, really, really fast in terms of conventional uh, time frames. So you have, to, you have to invest up front in time and money and effort. So the initial cost is higher. Um, yeah, and also Adding an automation tool, adding something that does something, is again something that can break. So you add more moving parts. You have to be more thorough with your checks. You have to think about how to monitor. You have to do various extra efforts due to the fact that you are introducing new moving parts. But you are introducing one moving part to, to, um, to for me, a human is a whole chain of moving parts. You get sick, you get distracted, you, people have problems at home, maybe they have health issues, maybe they have other worries. Humans are humans and for me a human is a, moving, a whole chain of moving parts. So consider that one. And of course the last part, does it mean less jobs? Yes it does, unfortunately. Um, and I'm no, social, I'm no economist, I'm no, uh, I'm no um, social science guy, I'm an IT guy. Okay, phys physicist by training, but I'm an IT guy. I cannot tell you about those implications. Um, and I don't know what the best policy would be, but we are going to become a... a um, we're going to become a society that automates more and more stuff. I mean, this, the, the machine learning hype, the AI hype that happens right now, um, where I always tell people, call me up, actually intelligent. Um, but it, in essence, is this thought of automation thought to, its, thought to its end means less jobs for people. Then again, how many people do you know that go to their go to their job, 
just to earn money to go home and have a life. They don't enjoy their job. I have, I have the luxury, and I hope most of you do, that I um, do a job I like, a, a job I love. Um, many people don't. I mean, if you think about, I don't know, um, all those people that sort mail in the post office. It's automated a, a whole lot, but some things need to, be, need to be handled by humans. I know a guy that does that, and honestly, he doesn't like his job. He does it because it earns money. And those people will be freed in those terms that they don't have to go to their don't have to work anymore but then again what about the money the whole concept of our society is exchange of time for money and or goods for money and yeah that's that's a thing we have to tackle and honestly i have no idea what the best solution would be in that in that case um so then again, yeah, sounds all nice what you what you're saying. Yeah, automation is cool and you should do it and whatnot. But when? What is a good task I should automate? Um, if you catch yourself considering should I automate this task in 90% of the cases, it's the sensible thing to do. Is actually if you're thinking about it, do it. Um, there is a really, really nice uh, chart from XKCD where on the one axis is how much time you, you save and on the other how, much, uh, how often you do it and then how much time is... Because in the end, if it's if you do it if you don't do it often, and it's a more complicated task, then probably you will in a year. That's what I do every time. That's what I did every time I did my tax returns. Every year was like, oh how does it how does this thing work again? I have no idea. I I had to read up everything up. I had to read up everything again. And look up everything, look everything up again and again. And oh, how was that? In that, in what part does this mean? How do they phrase that sentence? What does it mean? So I automate it away. Um, and of course, don't don't automate tasks that you like. Uh, my my girlfriend, for example, is a violin maker. I. She loves what she does. I told her, oh, you could do that with a CNC machine and that with that. You, you could use machines to do that. You would be so much faster. And she told me, yes, but it wouldn't be that much fun. So, um, yeah, if you like something, if you like doing it, ah, nah, don't do it. Don't automate it. You will taking the, uh, you will taking the, um, the fun out of it. Except if you love automating, that's me. Um, so, now some storytelling um, from my part. A bit f uh, old stories from the trenches. I used to work. I used to work as a consultant. That means I went from company to company and basically put out fires. And on one of those company, what we had to do in the first place there often is install Microsoft software. God, these things were tedious. I was sitting there whole days just pressing next and waiting for the bar to, to go from left to right. I had a sizable, I had a sizable uh, 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 a salary, but what the heck? Why should somebody do that? So we found out a way to automate it. It's called auto it. Look it up for Windows. It's great. If you don't use Windows, congratulations. Um, then on one of those jobs where I was waiting again for a bar to go from left to right, a 
a trainee um, uh, sat next to me because I was sitting in the, those booths and places where all those people, all those external people and the trainees sit. And he sat next to me and was looking over. I mean, I just had to watch a bar wander, so why not uh, look up, what, uh, look what he does, and maybe, uh, maybe I learn something. And turns out, he was backing up all the firewalls. All right, I asked him, how often do you do that? Oh, well, every Friday. Yeah, but you leave early on Friday, don't you? No, no, it's eight hours backing up all the firewalls, which includes following tasks, logging in front end, doing two clicks, and then another one, and then you have a file locally, and you have to, and then you have to sort the file to the to, to the corresponding location, and rename it uh, according to the date. Nice. He was doing that every single Friday. So basically, the company was paying somebody to eight hours every week to do that. What? So, okay, I looked it up. What was the, the, the firewall vendor? Oh, they have an API. Great. Hmm, let me, let me um, glue some Python code together. And try, back, try doing the backup with the Python code. So I did. And voila, in one hour of, okay, it was, after one hour it was ugly Python code. After three hours it was good looking Python code. I was, after one hour I was able to back up all the firewalls in the company simultaneously. And I still talk to one of the guys there, we became friends. And he tells me, yeah, we still use that tool and it runs daily. So, um, why did people think that it was a good idea for the, for the intern to uh, back up all the firewalls? Well, uh, to do it that way, I mean, backing up, backups are important, and if you don't have backup, don't expect compassion. Um, uh, in, in terms of, uh, if you lose your data, back up your data. If you, if you want to take something, one thing out of this talk, backups. Um, <laughs> That's like the, the fundamentals. But why did they think it was, that was the way? Because they were so caught up in their routines and their daily business. They didn't look, they didn't think outside the box, even though most, for most of you in here, it would be, of course I would, it would, it would be obvious. Of course I would use the API, but, um, they were thinking in those, yeah, this is how you back up a firewall uh, in the company. You go there, 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 and there. And if you want to do it 40 times, then you have to do it 40 times. They had actually like 60 firewalls. Yeah, that, that guy's job was, was uh, not great. He didn't like it either. Um, but this, I've also seen in me that sometimes I do a task, I do a task very, I do a task in a way because I learned it that way. And then once I take, take a step back, I say, oh, I, I could do that in a different way and that would be automated. So think about it. And if you, in your company, uh, if you have more than five computers, seriously think about it. And at home, if you have more than five computers, also seriously think about it. And in the end, it doesn't matter if you write bash scripts, if, you, if that's your gig, good, do it. I wouldn't like to, I, that's not the way I would recommend to you to do it, but yeah, there are various um, other tools. There's, uh, in terms of, Open, uh, in, um, operating system automation is Puppet, it's Ansible, it's Chef, it's Salt Stack, it's Pick Your Poison. And in terms of 
testing and running tests, there are more tools out there that you can think of. And if you have small services, like, I don't know, small stateless things that have to run because, I don't know, it's, um, uh, a, it's a login front end for a customer and you just need this thing to, to generate a, um, a, uh, an auth token or whatever, there is Docker, and uh, I think the next talk is Docker Swarm, um, which again is a lot in that direction. And if you have people in your company who are responsible for people, and they tell you, hey, I was thinking about automating, stop them there and tell them simply yes. You will benefit from their work, and they will benefit from also, you will benefit from the consistency and the fact that they're doing it well, and they will benefit from the fact that they will learn a shit ton of things. You will, you become a better, that's what I realized in my career, in my not so long career, um, that every time I automated a, 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 a task, I understood it and did a better job um, than doing it by hand every single time. So, um, yeah, uh, I think I will stop here. Uh, we have five minutes left, according to my clock. Is that right? Um, questions, ideas, maybe something I didn't consider, maybe it was wrong. Feel free. Yes? You mentioned some tools for infrastructure automation, like cancel the results and stuff like that. Um, what are your feelings towards uh, immutable infrastructure and tools like Terraform in order to automate uh, deployment from end to end and not use like servers like you know, Snowflake where you... Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, I will have to repeat the question for the, for, for the recording. Uh, so, uh, what I think of uh, of other forms of automation like Terraform or whatnot, if it works for you, if it's, that's why I brought the example with, with Bash. Uh, I mean, if it works for you and if it's the way you want to go, go for it. Uh, they're, they're sensible, okay, I, I didn't have the, I didn't have the